it's quite late now. I've just come from seeing Hassan at Kuala Lumpur's airport in KLA 2, which is basically where the low cost airlines uh, like Air Asia fly in and out of. He is in the arrivals terminal in an area where there's no access to food and beverage. He has three mobile kiosks and that's about it. I have one small snippet of video that I can show you to show that I was there. Hey guys, I'm with Hassan. But... Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was something quite uncomfortable in that I, I wasn't sure if I was doing something wrong by taking him basically fresh clothes, underwear, socks. Um, his flip-flops had died. They basically had broken some some days or weeks back and he had jimmy rigged them so he had asked for flip-flops, brought toothpaste, toothbrush, deodorant, and then I brought extra things like body gel, shampoo, uh, men's hair products, uh, men's face wash, which he actually liked. I was very happy about that. A um, couple of like chocolate yogurt bars, which I wish I had bought more now because he seems to have liked that as well. I just got some good news and I think it's worth to share it. After all these days, it's definitely worth to share it. Well, I just got the chocolate. Yep, I already ate half of it. And I'm still thinking about the second half. No, 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 no other news. That's it. Have a good night. There wasn't much else there, but it was enough to refresh what he was wearing and, and like get him feeling a, a little bit back to himself again, which I was very happy for. I'm not really sure what to say. I'm going to be writing up a piece that I'll contribute to a newspaper or online media outlet that describes more in detail the, the meeting that I had. If you're looking for new information on Hassan, this won't be truly revealing, but I want to share a few things that he shared with me. I'd also like to tell you about the effect that it's had on me. Um, personally, so first it was really lovely to, to see him after reading so much, after knowing what my friends in the refugee volunteer community are doing to raise money for him and to try and help him relocate and to, to be a contributing member of society in some place that he can call home for the rest of his life. I was very proud to do this small part, which please understand, I did nothing. Like, I, I, I know nothing about how to relocate him, how it's friends of mine and friends of friends who are the heroes in all of this. My friends had asked me to please give him a hug, and it's, it's kind of an odd thing to, to, to hug someone with true emotion when you first meet them, um, but but I did because they all care so much, I care so much, and you can see from Hassan that he really appreciates and loves and cares for those who are trying so hard to help him create a new life for himself. So. What happened, my, my friends had advised me um, that morning that the Malaysian government had not formally but informally um, offered him asylum here. But the problem is that his passport expires in nine months and once it does and he's no longer able to obtain a passport and he's in a country that he is not a citizen of, he's going to be living the exact same fate again over, it's like Groundhog's Day for him in a really terrible way. So this is basically Hassan's last stand. He believes that he can 
find a country to love and, and honor and cherish and, and be a part of. And sorry. Sorry. Uh, I don't want to cry. Okay. And, and he believes that he can find that home now. He thinks that if he waits the nine months until his passport expires and he's forced to do all of this again, that no one will remember his name. Right now, he, he has people who know who he is. They, there's people fighting for him. So who's, basically, he said, who, who's going to remember me in nine months? So there's an agreement amongst my friends that, yes, okay, this is the right thing for him to be doing, to stand tall, stand fast, stay steadfast, and to hold true to what he believes is the right path for him at the moment, and that that's what he's going to do. So if you're watching this and you know someone in a country that embraces Syrians, embraces refugees, embraces people who they had no choice in where they were born, and they're only living a life now, because they weren't lucky like me and were born in Southern California, or lucky like you and wherever you were born. Um, if you know anyone can help that can help, please do reach out. I'll put you in touch with Hassan. I'd also like to say, you know, one, one of my best friends, his name is Rando Wagner. If you go to Facebook and you type in One Human Race, he started a nonprofit group uh, two, three years ago now. To. He basically just decided I can't sit back and do nothing any longer and he started doing something. It's a really interesting thing to have someone who was, you know, a best friend who used to party with day and night and who's pretty much, you know, naughty and fun and, and smart and, and kind and all of those things, but who turns into someone who fights for refugees day and night. And I think all of us who are friends with Rando I think most of my friends can appreciate the fact that around him now, it's like we still live, most of us live lives that are quite selfish. And and that's not how Rando lives any longer. And it's, it's a very interesting thing to have a friend that has transformed and has affected and, and it bettered the lives of so many people. When, you know, like me, I, I luxury travel and and things that that don't shape the fate of humans in a way that he does every day so I'm pretty sure that all of this has had a bit of an effect on me I'm not sure now that I can sit around and be idle either um, Hugging Hassan, meeting Hassan, kind of checking my privilege. Um, I, I think it's been a good thing for me. I think a lot of us, if we think about the fact that we live the lives that we do, sometimes because of how fortunate we were with where we were born, how smart we are. Uh, what we look like. Oh, hopefully we've all done it on our own. Hopefully you haven't married into something that's enriched you, but that's me being judgy. <laughs> um, but I, I think that this has changed my life. I would really love for someone out there to help Hassan change his life. So again, if you know someone, if you can help, please do reach out. I'll put you directly in touch with him. He's a really great guy. And he just wants to make a difference and live in peace. And that's not a possibility for him if he is forced to return to his homeland. That's basically paramount to a death sentence. And if we can help one person, we should, right? So I'm here.
كيفك ماما شو اخبارك؟ تمام؟ عجبتك الكنز الجديدة؟ ايه حلوة صح؟ اشتغلك انا اوكي؟ ديري بالك على حالك وسلمي على على اخوك، انا بجمع مش ناقصني شيء باي يا قلبي باي باي So I was speaking to my mother. I was assuring her that everything is uh, is okay. I'm in a better position. I showed her my new T-shirt. I got it uh, two days ago. It's nice one. It's a fresh. I feel clean. So yes, I'm getting the new supplies, and it makes things easier. Yeah. That's all. That's all.